This is hands down my worst use of $100. Growing up, all I rode was Walmart bikes, and I thought that Walmart bikes was the only way to ride a bike. Getting something that's cheap, unreliable, cruddy, and at times painful to ride. And that's the Walmart bike riding experience, and I didn't know that there was a whole nother side to cycling. In this video, I'm going to ride 100 miles on a $100 Walmart bike to show you the crucial aspects of cycling that Walmart just misses, and that unfortunately, acts as a barrier for people to fall in love with cycling. And of course, I'm coming from the perspective of somebody who gets to ride a lot of nice bikes. If you find that your Walmart bike is nice for you and your needs, and you're perfectly happy with it, that's fine by me. I'm going to ride 100 miles on a Walmart Fixie, so you don't have to. This video is made possible by Wabi Cycles. For complete steel bikes that are well under 20 pounds or 9 kilograms, consider checking them out linked at the top of the description. I'm either hoping that this bike surprises me a lot and that it makes it the full 100 miles reliably, soundly, and without a hitch, and that I get to enjoy this ride, or I'm hoping that it's exactly what I expect and it breaks down somewhere along the way and I'll have to call it quits because I'm really not looking forward to this ride. Oh, it's as awful as I was expecting it to be. They didn't even wrap, it's just wrapped in paper. It's just, this thing weighs a ton as well. Oh my, that is, that is too heavy to be called a bicycle. Ooh. Luckily, there's not much packaging, so this unboxing should be very quick. These cranks look like they're made out of plastic. Um, that is, that is, the outside of those cranks are actually plastic. I don't know how much of it is metal. That is plastic. Are you <laughs> kidding me? I didn't know that was possible. I think there's a metal core, but dear God. A century of cycling. That slogan is actually quite appropriate for this video because I will be getting a century of cycling out of this bike and no more. I sure hope it's less though. Oh, they actually have to label it Fixie so you know what it is because you can tell just by looking at it. Just to be clear, this seat clamp is as loose as it can possibly go. I'll even take out the bolt to show you. Oh, there we go. All it needed was a hearty smack to get in. Dear God, it just falls in. So I need to get this rear wheel off in order to flip it from the freewheel side over to the fixed gear side. This is the biggest wrench that I have, and I know you're not supposed to use adjustable wrenches on these things, but... Oh, that's, yeah. This bolt absolutely is not budging whatsoever. I am actually quite impressed that they were able to get it on this tight. I don't know how they did it, but bravo. Oh my gosh. Oh, they got that right. They got the rear spacing right. Take note. State and a Venton. Because fixed gears are the simplest bike possible in that they have the least amount of components out of any bike. That means they're also the lightest bikes possible. An average steel fixed gear weighs about 20 pounds. 25 pounds, I'd say, is too much. Ooh. This bike weighs 30 pounds flat. For my own sanity, I don't want to just be negative about this bike, so. Here's what I like about it. It's not all bad. Um, the tire clearance is some of the widest that I've ever seen on a fixed gear. You could drive a bus through this tire clearance. It currently has 38C tires and it still has plenty more to go. I think that's because this is actually a mountain bike frame set, but that's neither here nor there. The second thing that I like about it, it's a bike. I'm really nervous that this bike will hold up. It, it is built like a tank. It might just make it, and that bums me out. The 
today is a 100 mile loop, 60 miles out and then 40 miles back. My final destination is Folsom State Prison because riding this bike for 100 miles is my own kind of prison. I'm doing my best to stay positive. Riding long distances like this, especially on a bike like this, is 20% physical and 80% mental. Today is a beautiful spring day. I get to ride a bike all day, literally all day, maybe like 14 to 16 hours, but that means I can finish an entire audiobook. <laughs> And as long as I keep a steady and conservative pace of 10 miles an hour, I should get there in only 10 hours of riding. So it should be fun. I hope. So right now I'm about two miles out and we've experienced our first mechanical issue. The chain fell off while I was climbing up this gentle overpass. I made the chain tighter than I usually do to prevent this, but apparently the cog and the chain ring are so out of round that it still fell off when I started to push it with a tighter chain. This is the first time I've ever dropped a fixed gear chain. So this bike is actually, it's not all bad and it's not as terrible as I was expecting. The tires are 38Z, they are nice and cushiony, which gives for a fairly smooth ride. I mean, as smooth as it'll get. And that's about all I like about it so far. I am 6.5 miles out and my legs are already starting to get sore. That's mostly because fit is the number one most important thing when it comes to a bicycle. And with the Kent Walmart Fixie, you get a choice of one size. And that size is 700C because they don't even size by frame, they size by wheel. The frame set itself is similar to a 54 centimeter bike. Now I'm six foot or 182 centimeters and I normally ride a 58 centimeter bike. And when it comes to bikes, every single centimeter counts, especially on long distance rides like this. If you don't have your bike really dialed in for something like this, you could get injured. But hopefully the bike gets injured before I do. The fit for me on this bike is quite cramped to say the least. I'm on mile 17 and I'm already starting to get some lower back pain. I do have to stretch out my left leg periodically or just pedal with my heels because I can't get the seat post high enough even though I completely ignored the minimum insertion line in true Walmart fashion. I've only ridden 17 miles, most of it was with a gentle tailwind and already I feel like I've ridden 40 miles and I want to take a nap. On the bright side though, regardless of what happens on this ride, whether I finish it or not, I will be a stronger rider at the end of it. about two miles of gravel and surprisingly this Kent Walmart Fixie rode pretty confidently over that two miles of gravel. It probably has to do with this relaxed geometry that looks a lot like a mountain bike and probably is. It actually went from feeling like a slog to feeling sufficient. I was about to say how surprisingly okay this Walmart Fixie is, but then I remembered that I have this tailwind and I've had it this pretty much this entire ride and the tailwind is only picked up in speed. And I remembered this when I was just biking on this trail here and this lady who looked like she was in her 60s, she looked like she was like a, a retired science teacher, like the cool one that definitely did drugs in college, like that kind of lady. And she just cruised right past me on her surly long haul trucker. It feels fine whenever I have a tailwind, but as soon as there's a crosswind or a headwind or a slight uphill, you can really feel the weight of this bike. Luckily, I'm on the American River bike trail right now, which means that I can just take this trail all the way to Folsom State Prison. Downside is that a lot of people who might normally be faster than are just casually going to cruise by me when I'm on this bike, and I've just gotta swallow my pride. The 
This is the American River Bike Trail. I was supposed to be able to take it all the way to Folsom State Prison. This is Discovery Park, now Discovery Lake. The trail just ends. I could get around this part of the river, but it's likely that the rest of this section of the river is also flooded. And the last section that I filled, I also forgot my expensive mic in Old Sack. So I need to go back there, hope that my mic is there, and then find a different route. This is a park. Well, this was a park. Now it's a lake. Can't believe it's still here. You know, it's a good thing that this bike is slow and that the American River Trail is flooded because I wouldn't have stopped and realized that I left this behind. Plus, I didn't get very far because this bike is not fun. This thing is worth more than the bike. Gear Century, you know that the last 20 miles is as hard as the first 80 miles. I'm at that point, except I'm only at 50 miles. It's called the mile 80 wall. And at this point, everything in your body and in your mind is just screaming at you that you're an idiot and that you should quit. And I'm at that point halfway through. A lot of doubt enters your mind here. You start thinking, why am I doing this? Why am I here? It's just suffering for the sake of suffering. The thing that's embarrassing for me is that I don't know if it's me or the bike. That's how good this bike is. It's actually making me question my abilities as a cyclist. Another thing that's demoralizing is that I'm riding on the paved bike path and right next to it that runs parallel is a dirt bike path and I'm getting passed by guys on mountain bikes just cruising through the dirt bike paths. I'm getting yelled at on your left coming through by, by old guys with gray ponytails. I want to blame the bike, but it's holding up surprisingly well. And it's, it's a little disappointing that it might be worth the $100 that they ask for. I don't want to be here really badly. 100 kilometers in miles. 62 miles for 100 kilometers. That's only 12 more miles for a metric century. I'll check back with you <laughs> once I get there. that I want more than to simply just stop riding this damn bike. I've officially ridden a metric century and at this point I'm like, yeah, I get the point. If I finish the 40 miles, I don't know what else I would learn or accomplish. There's no payoff to this. I am just simply not having fun anymore. Physically, I'm okay, surprisingly. Nothing is sore. My hands, my wrists, my back, my thighs are absolutely fine and I could physically make another 40 miles on this bike. It's just that I really don't want to. There's no point. So I'm going to call for a ride. I'm calling my dad, I'm so done. Hey, can you pick me up? <laughs> Bye. I'm going home. I'm not taking the bike with me. I didn't end up finishing the 100 miles, but I would consider 100 kilometers on a Walmart fixie still a success. And I learned a lot throughout this entire process. Namely, that the $100 Walmart fixie is surprisingly adequate. Yes, it's heavy, 
Yes, it's slow, it's tiring, and it's not a whole lot of fun to ride. Yes, it only comes in one size. Yes, the long-term reliability of the bike is questionable. To put it in perspective, this bike costs the same as a nice pair of sneakers, and it beats walking. And because it's a fixed gear, it has less parts, which theoretically makes it more reliable in the long term than other Walmart bikes that have gears. Although I had an issue with the chain popping off in the first two miles, once I really cranked down on that chain, it did tend to slip on uphills, but it never fell off again. And as poorly as the bike fit me, it was surprisingly comfortable. I periodically shifted my weight. I had to pedal with my heels. I had to overall ride suboptimally. But after six hours of riding this thing, I wasn't sore at all. I'm satisfied with this bike because I have very low expectations for it and it exceeded them. I don't think that this bike is worth the money and that you should save it for a little bit more. Something $200 will be twice as good and something around $400 to $500 will be more than four to five times as good as the Walmart Fixie. But if you're in a really tight pinch and you absolutely need a bike for the lowest amount of money possible, the Walmart Fixie beats walking. But if you want to ride a bike, get to point A to point B fast, if you want to enjoy cycling, then it's best to look elsewhere. But surprisingly, if you know what you're getting into, the Walmart Fixie is perfectly adequate. <laughs> and speaking of bikes where you can really fall in love with cycling, our channel sponsor, Wabi Cycles, is the epitome of what makes cycling fun. Every one of Wabi's design choices are meticulously made to give you the purest ride quality for the money. And Wabi executes those choices perfectly with Master Craftsman right here in Taiwan and a friendly bike shop in Denver, Colorado that is eager to answer your questions and get you on a bike that you'll love. This amounts to efficient, elegant, and timeless bikes that you can get from a passionate group of fellow cyclists. Wabi's relentless attention to detail results in Wallace, my 58 centimeter Wabi Special, weighing in at 17.5 pounds or 7.97 kilograms straight out of the box. That's well under 20 pounds for a completely steel, lugged frame set that has no carbon components. That weight isn't just for quoting and impressing other cyclists though. It results in the best riding experience that I've ever had on a bike with a snappy, responsive, and lively bike that only top shelf steel can bring. That pure fun makes it easy for me to ride Wallace, my Wabi Special, as my only bike as I travel throughout Asia. So if you're looking for the bike that could very well put an end to your search for the perfect bike, consider checking out Wabi Cycles linked at the top of the description because it really is the closest thing that I've ridden to the perfect bike.